What up, Tech Easy Gamers? It's your boy, Jermaine with Tech Toys and Gaming. And today, you are here because you are looking for an external storage solution, blazing fast external storage solution, possibly for your content creation, utilizing your MacBook or your laptop, or even for gaming, right? You want to store games on an external SSD, a really fast one, such as an M.2 or NVMe, which is what we're going to be covering today, because today, I have a nice solution for your NVMe, and that is if you have an NVMe or M.2 drive sitting somewhere in your house and you just need an enclosure so that you can connect it to any device you would like, then you're in the right place. And the device today I am referencing is the Sanzang Master NVMe SSD M.2 enclosure. That is correct, my techies and games out there. So if you're looking for an awesome, cool looking enclosure for your NVMe drive to connect to your MacBook, to your PlayStation, to any compatible device, then you're in the right place because we're gonna test this out. Today I'm gonna test via my MacBook, probably my PC, and we're gonna see how fast and what the data transfer rates are going through this NVMe enclosure. Let's jump into it. And this is the device we are covering today. My techies and gamers out there in the world looking to get some portability going with your SSD, right? You may have a SSD NVMe drive sitting around and you can't use it for, I don't know, MacBook, PlayStation, Xbox, maybe even a Steam Deck. Branding on the box, pretty nice. Has some nice specs and details in there. Obviously you can get it in a few different colors, a little bit of variety going on there. What do you get in this box? I'm gonna open it right now. Forget the overhead cam because there's probably just a couple things in here anyway. So sliding it out of this cool little, I was gonna say red box, but that's actually my lights flashing on it. Oh, it is a red box. What? Sliding the components out of the box. There is, uh, you get your instructions floating on top of this. Yeah, we're not even gonna look at that. We're gonna freestyle it because we are techies and gamers and we know our stuff, I hope. This is how it comes nice and sandwichedly packaged in your box. Uh, looks very cool and sleek. I, let's just look at the enclosure itself. This is the enclosure, techies and gamers. This looks kind of cool. Uh, it has this nice, Aluminum finish with a little bit of a texture there on the top portion, which is made of plastic and looks like there's an LED indicator and along the bottom you have literally nothing. Then on the other end, you have a USB-C, right? 10 gigabits of speed. It should say 10 gigabits on there. Yep, there you go. The little icon for 10 gigabits. Your USB to USB-C. This is the cable right here. And looks like on one end, you can actually disconnect the USB portion and you will have yourself a nice USB-C to USB-C. So nice flexibility there for testing with multiple devices or usage with multiple devices that don't have USB-C because not everything has USB-C, I don't know why. Also in our little box at the bottom is, it looks like you have cooling plates that you will sit your SSD right into when you submerge this into your NVMe enclosure. So, and most likely there will be some thermal tape where you would stick this uh, somewhere. What? Thermal tape, as I suspected, in the box for your sticking and cooling pleasure. So we're gonna use the thermal tape that it comes with. There is a little small bag of screws here. The way you essentially open this device is through the bottom. So there is that little, Zoom in right now and focus on the camera, right? What, what? On the bottom, you see that little play sign? That means something. And essentially, you put your finger there and slide it like so, and the bottom comes off, right? This is to lock the enclosure into place. And then you just pull it apart and you have your enclosure like so. This would be the top because that is where your SSD will be sitting in. All right, and if you look deeply into this enclosure, you will see that there is the port where you actually slide in your drive. So be sure that you orient your M.2 drive correctly. All right, so we're going to screw on our SSD right here to this very last screw, which is the one that's for the fitting for the 2280 sized SSD. The screw you put on here is actually a little 
rubbery thing you kind of just slide onto the side of it like so and it corks seals onto the bottom of that ssd and once you squash it down it looks like that last but not least you squash your cooling plate with the thermal tape to the top of your ssd looks like i had a little extra my misalignment there sorry guys but i expect you guys to do better than me close up your enclosure seal your enclosure with your cap on the bottom lock in your enclosure like that and you're all set so we are going to go ahead and connect our ssd to our mac let's make the switch all right take us game so here we are connected to our macbook with the new enclosure ssd via the usb c port on my mac so the first thing you see is that the disc attached was not readable by this computer so it may be formatted in a particular format that is not compatible with Mac. So what we're gonna wanna do is initialize it so that the Mac sees it and we can get to the hard drive. So you click initialize and you will get the disk utility pop up in your face. And right here beneath that, you will see something called Realtek RTL. Now, uh, some hardware that's built into the actual SSD itself. Doesn't say crucial, but you can rename that later. So what do you do when you're here, right? You wanna initialize it, you can't use it because if you go to Finder, you'll see that your drive is just not there. All I have is the main drive and nothing else, no other locations. So first thing you wanna do is erase the drive, right? So we're going to erase this because it's already empty. There's nothing on it and format it, right? We'll call this our crucial 500 gig. And then the format you're gonna to wanna to choose is since it's 500 gigs, let's choose XFAT since that's compatible with both Windows and Mac. So that way, when you connect it to either a Mac or Windows and use them interchangeably, you can read and write off of this drive. All right, so be sure you choose that. And all right, let's choose XFAT. And we're gonna click erase right now, just like that. The operation was successful. Now you're gonna click done and if you notice over here on the side on my desktop, you see the hard drive, the Crucial 500, right? So let's click on that, open it, and we have ourselves a nice blank drive. And now with that being the situation, we can go ahead and do some, some see, some speed tests, right? Let's transfer some files to it, let's do some cartwheels, what? First thing I wanna do is do a blatant speed test utilizing black magic. All right, so first thing to do here is just go here, select your target drive. We wanna make sure we get our crucial drive, which is blank. Open that wide open. What, don't talk like that? Running the speed test with five gigs over black magic speed test, we are getting a max of 894 I'm looking at on the right and about the same on the read, 889, 890. And just for reference, utilizing my internal MacBook SSD, you'll see that the MacBook SSD internally is pretty fast, it's pretty robust. You get well over 5,000 megabytes on the right and close to 5,000 on the read. So editing directly off of your MacBook hard drive SSD, you're gonna get some good speeds and performance. And this is the base uh, MacBook 14 inch M.1 variant. So even with that, you are you have a pretty good and decent editing machine. All right, take us in gamers. So what is my overall thoughts on the Sang Zang Master NVMe 10 gigabit uh, SSD external drive reader. I think overall it's good. Hardware wise, it's a pretty decent build. I didn't have any issues with it getting hot, running tests over and over and trying to do stress tests on it, maxing out what it can potentially do, at least what this specific device can actually do. It is toolless. You just use your finger to push down on that rubber, I guess, cork thing and it snaps your drive into place and you just slip on the sleeve, lock it in and you're ready to rock and roll. So no gripes with any of that stuff there. I actually tested with two separate types of NVMEs. One was, is it my upside down? Flip those the right direction. I tested with two different NVMEs, one being a 4.0 PCIe, the other being 3.0. So this one does 6,000, this one does about 2,500, maybe a little bit less. This drive, I actually got 900 plus 
megabytes per second went up to about 902 903 and here i got close to 890 didn't get into the 900s and this if i put it into a motherboard and built out a new machine this would apparently be much faster than this drive because it's a 4.0 and if i have a 4.0 motherboard then yeah i'm gonna get those 6,000 megabytes maybe even faster save a few bucks if you're just looking to do some video editing some gaming off of your gaming pc you don't need 5,000 megabytes per second to get optimal speeds 1,000 will do just fine even if you're playing at 4k 120 hertz yes and you will get max performance awesome frame rates if you have a very robust machine you'll get 4k 90 frames per second or better utilizing this one and you will not see any real major difference if you actually plug this directly into the motherboard so yeah that's my spill on it if you're interested in getting this device check the link in the description is actually a pretty good deal if you're looking to do some uh content creation and editing on a laptop on a pc or even gaming off of any nvme and connecting it to your console to your pc the performance will be fantastic either way all right techies and gamers and if you have any questions i know there's a lot of nuances with this kind of stuff you know i couldn't answer everything that'll be a whole 30 minute video but if you have any questions and concerns about the way this works the way it doesn't work just leave those comments in the comments below and while you're down there click subscribe if this is your kind of thing tech gaming tips and tricks and getting some of the latest and greatest information uh, on hardware and how it works in this day and age all right take and gamers and with that i'll see you in my next video later